So then we are back with the modern understandings from the time of the second tabernacle services, from the time of the Messiah, and the translation is from the English Aramaic translation, from the time of the prophets of Israel, from the original manuscripts of then the prophets, indicating us then the time of the end as per the prophecies and the Messiah. There are many controversies regarding then the thousand years of the Messiah, and there are many concocted ideas and understandings not in line with the Messiah's teachings. So let's evaluate very precisely what it means, the thousand years. Where do we find this information? We find the information in the 20th chapter of the Autumn Feast, or Revelation. You find then the first thousand, give it to his people, thus the thousand years of the Messiah. The other thousand was given then to Nahashatan. And then comes the time of the restoration and reduction, and then the autumn feast. There is not another thousand years coming in the future. Those were understandings from the scoundrelized Bible. Those then, the Greco-Romans, they had lots of Megillas in front of them. They did not know how to translate them. There is not a thousand years yet ahead. The thousand years, it's gone. So then, we find the Messiah during the Spring Feast. What was the objective of the Messiah? Completing the Spring Feast. Where do you find the Spring Feast? Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. From the first verse up to the 21st verse, thus the Spring Feast. However, the Spring Feasts are the substance of the feast itself. However, in Hebrews 10, you find the shadow prophetic events of the substance of what was practiced. This means the Messiah came to complete the spring feast. Every year, ever since Moshe came down with the holy instructions, then the people of Israel, or the chosen people, or the set apart, they practiced every year the same feasts. They had to memorize these generation after generation after generation until the Messiah came. Thus, he came. He came and he brought the first anointing for the second tabernacle services, where then the tabernacle, rather than singular, would become plural. Then came the time of a transition. The Messiah said prior of his ascension, wait at the house of prayer until Ruach HaKodesh would come. Thus he came. The first function was tongues, interpretation of tongues. Was the first function. Thus afterwards came the time of transition from the first tabernacle service to the second tabernacle service. Then we find the first holy city during the time of Yahanan. From the time of Yahanan and on until 1009, the holy cities of the Messiah were given directives to the nations. Where do you find the records? You would find the records in the Alexandrian library. It was burned. Nahashtan or Satan decided through Constantine to destroy the library because they had the records of nations being directed by the holy city. That's why these days most of the scriptures, the most popularly people taking the time and reading it, it's from the time of a transition and not from the time of the cities. The relationship with the set-apart and Gentiles are related with the cities only. We are reading documents only meant for the set-apart or then the Hebraic people, the chosen people. Those are then delegated with responsibilities. Gentiles, they do not have any part in it. The only section of it that Shaul the Shaliak gave to Gentiles were those people who were then in relationship with the set apart. While the cities were not around, the selected, functioned people would then teach the Gentiles and some of them would receive the Messiah. 
and they did receive only remarks and not delegations. So then the true relationship with the Gentiles and set apart, they are truly after the holy city then started with Yohanan. From the time of Yohanan until 1009, this is then the thousand years of the Messiah. It is gone a long time ago because it is related with the first anointing. There is a second anointing coming related with the restoration. Then we understand. Then in 2009, then ended the rulership of Nehashtan from 1009. Thus, you understand that in 1009, 2009 was the thousand years given to Nehashtan. His facet of destroyer was then in prison, and it is in prison yet. His facet of deceit is yet in the earth deceiving. However, the deceit truly halted in 2009. We are transitioning ourselves back to the truth where it was during the time of Yohanan, with the returning of the holy cities. There is only the restoration at the moment and the reduction of time, and that's it. Whatsoever prophecy you find has to fit until 7031. Not longer, or you can understand if your calculation then give plus minus two years maximum. And that's it. Because he was then born in 4999. As we understand the Creator's calendar, it starts already with a thousand, not zero. So then we are over the seventh thousand. So the time is very short. We have roughly 20 years left and that's it. How do we find this? The great star of Bethlehem was recorded secularly in the computer, then recorded the time, and then the season was then calculated. Then the eclipses were also calculated, and then there was a census also of the time where then these factors were then considered, and some of these data were placed in the computer, plus the understanding of every month with a sliver of the lunar view. Then they were able to retract, and then they were able to find when the Messiah was born, 4999. So then he was placed on a pole 5032. He spent time with the Samaritans 5031. The Messiah gave them two days. When you read Shimon speaking, don't be ignorant and understand a days of thousand years, Shimon was explaining the two thousand years given to the Gentiles. So you find then from 5031 until 7031, the 2,000 years granted to the Gentiles. However, the speaking of heaven's layer of understanding, Revelation 20 chapter gives you a 1,000 years for the Messiah, a 1,000 years for Nahashtan. Both of them are gone. What is holding at the moment is the 2,000 years from the time of the Samaritans until 7031. We are in this layer holding because when it ends, the entire Torah must be completed by then. And we understand the autumn feast must be 490 days precisely. As it was then the half of the Torah, half of the prophets, half of the writings and so on and so forth. We understand 490 days spring feast. Thus half of the year's feasts. The other half is the autumn feast. 490 days. However, after 2009, we find ourselves then during the time of restoration and reduction from 7031. For how long? Only Yahweh knows. He has the authority to shorten as many years he can, and then always pointing of a factor of Shimon, speaking then his people would be disciplined for forsaking the Holy Covenant regarding the Messiah and the Second Tabernacle Services. Thus, the returning of the cities for the completion of the Second Tabernacle Services. 
then we understand these are for the set apart and their responsibilities. Gentiles, they have no part in the holy cities. They only show up at the gates for ministrations. You know, seven spirits of Elohim, seven functions. There are no gifts. There are functions. The Hebraic people, they function in their cities and they minister to the Gentiles outside of the holy cities. Then the Gentiles do the testimony. Testimony is done by Gentiles. Set apart, they don't do any of it. They only teach the people as fit. And most of the teaching is done via those ministrations. As you understand, there is no gift of teaching. There is no function of teaching. There are functions where Ruach HaKodesh does the work. The rest of it we have to learn and then we learn from the teachers. However, those from the city, they are functioned and they minister to the Gentiles. This is the way it works. And we understand that those teachers, they are not going to be teaching on their own. The teaching must come from Ruach Kodesh. So it has to have a function each time they teach. We must understand a factor. The city of Jerusalem was to be closed. The learnings of the temple, they were not legal. Try to understand the context. The city of Jerusalem was to be as the city of the desert, secluded from any invader, any Gentile of the time. They were to remain secluded. The city was to be closed, but the city was not closed. So the Messiah, while he was teaching, there were many Gentiles listening to him. And they had no idea where they were listening because they should not have been there. It was not for them to participate with the teachings of the Messiah because the Messiah was delegating responsibility to his people. So then, when you understand a city and then people functioning, you are not going to receive teaching of the Torah. You are going to receive functions via ministries. Seven spirits of Elohim, seven functions. This is what you are going to receive. You are not going to have a person from the city coming and teaching you. You are going to receive ministrations via Ruach HaKodesh. The rest of it has to be done by the Gentiles, via sharing. So when we share with each other the information, it is an understanding of gathering information. But teaching is not part of it. We receive functionings via ministrations. So then, furthering the understanding, then we understand, thousand years for the Messiah is already gone. The other thousand years for Nahashtan is already gone. We are during a time of restoration and reduction from 7031. That's precisely where we are at in the day and time, 70, 12, the end of the line, 70, 31. We have roughly 20 years. In these 20 years, a lot must take place. The returning of the holy city in Africa, in the land of Cush, as per the time of Yahanan, serving the example for the other cities as it was before. Restoration does not mean new. It means in then place into practice what was already practiced in the past. Not above, not below, precisely as it was before. So no person can take the credit by saying anything new. Thus, then, the Torah, the Prophets, and the Writings are protected. And those are mostly spearheading for the set apart. But they have to do their job. They have to understand if they don't do their job, the hand of the discipline of Yahweh comes upon them. And always Yahweh uses other nations then to subdue Israel so they resume their services. He always uses this tactic in 
he always uses it. So you can be sure of it. The Muslim nations, they are coming together against Israel until they are threatened by leveling. Then they are going to understand. The Messiah told them, go around the world and form holy cities. And they are going to invest very precisely on what the Messiah had to say. So then, be prepared. Take up a pen or pencil, a piece of paper and write it down. Yahweh is going to use the Muslim world to subdue Israel. And they will to resume their services. Because there is a section of the prophecy yet related with the second anointing that must be completed prior of the initiation of the autumn feast. So then we understand where we are at. Please stay tuned. Much more coming up.